Okay, this is the short cable way. I haven't done much work in here yet because as I, as I do work at the top and in the middle and the bottom, I'm saving this place for later because I track a lot of garbage through here. So rather than um, making this pretty, this is one of the first things I wanted to make pretty, but the reality is I'd get it all dirty. So I'm, I'm holding off. But my plan here is inside these rings all the way around, I'm gonna put um, LED rope lights so that you can't see the lights themselves, just the glow. And I think this will look just gorgeous if these rings would glow as, as, as the as an indirect lighting system through here. Don't know if you have this in your site yet, but you see how high this floor is compared to the tone? I took about 12,000 pounds of scrap steel out of here and it caused the bird cage to raise up because they're all in springs. So the more weight we take out of here, the higher the floor rises. Now they're adjustable, and I have the schematics to do those adjustments, but I figure I'm going to wait until we're done before we go adjusting the springs. This is the uh, second floor, floor number two. This is the, these little slots on the floor where the desk was. This is where somebody sat for 23 years with their hand on the key, waiting to turn the key. On the floor right there is where the cabinets were. They had all the blinky lights that showed the status of the, of the missiles and the systems and the complex. And then over on that far side over there was where the other key was. So one key was here, or one key was here. And that's what it took for launch the nukes. When this site was opened, there was no rust whatsoever. And one of the things that um, it was interesting, the previous owner had this site for about 23 years. It took him a long time, a little bit at a time, to open things up. But one of the things that he did that was a huge mistake, he did an awesome job pouring concrete and, and doing certain, certain things around here. But from an engineering perspective, there was a fatal mistake. On the bottom floor, the uh, escape shaft, he viewed that as an exhaust fan place. So he put a big fan blowing air out the shaft. What that had the effect of doing was sucking all the moist air from the water that accumulated in the entrance portal, and it sucked all that moist air through here for 20 years. And it had the effect of rusting everything. There was no rust until that happened. Now this is mostly surface rust. It comes off really easy, but the paint is badly blistered. Um, and you'll notice there was a giant mesh of conduits over my head. A lot of people, um, have questioned you, Nick, why do you want to scrap the site? Well, as you'll see in the lower level, this area is so covered with conduits, there's no way in the world that you can get up there and scrape and paint this stuff right here. So, um, I have taken all, this, all the conduits and all the metal down from here, getting this ready for painting, and this is my next project right now. This room is about ready to be painted. skin is getting dried out down here. I'm sorry, Nick teases me that he's got his long cable away and I tease him that I don't have water. So one thing that disappointed me when I bought the property was this particular um, big tank to help sewage had been removed. The previous owner said, oh, it was gross, we had to get rid of it. I'm like, oh, you idiot, you should have cleaned it out and restored the pumps because this is where all the sewage would go. So in order for me to restore a flushing toilet in this property, I have to buy a modern system to uh, replace that tank. And this is the valve. There was a hydraulic actuator on that gate right there that they chopped off and took. But this is the other end of the pipe that you saw outside that we put the plastic pipe on to continue it. We will, we will leverage this because that's the only way we're gonna get through these massive walls is by leveraging the existing pipe and that'll get us out to our septic system. So if you look up at the ceiling, we were talking earlier about the ceilings, you see how much crap has to come out of here. None of this is useful. And the only way I can paint up above there 
is to get rid of all of it. I'll never use it again. I'm not going to run wires through it because there's corrosion in there. I'm not going to re-pipe them. I'll put up new conduit for anything that I need to do. This was a treasure. I found this. Don't get too close to it there. This is an actual launch order. It had been declassified, but I found the original on the internet. This is an original document, and there's a few more in here. Those, I have to find an expert to try and preserve and restore those, but those are just really cool. That's why I left them in there. These walls are all going. I have, I have no purpose for them. All right, so here, we can show this part. Oh, so there actually wasn't a wall here, huh? It's just cabinets that completely blocked mine. Yes. Yeah, you can't even tell it's here. Okay, so we can show this part. Now this part right here, you saw on um, Death Wars Bunny Slippers, there are eight ports right here that go up to a thing called Point A, and then they octopus out to all the antenna pads on the property. Because I can't drill a hole through 10 feet of concrete and a two inch steel cap on the outside, it only makes sense for me to leverage what's already there. So, these right here are hot air exhaust valves for some of my air conditioning units. Um, these are armored, high-speed fiber optics. I won't get into too many details, but I could run an entire city off of the fiber optics that go through that right there. Um, and I have uh, 220, 200 amp power coming to a power panel that I have over here. And from here, after everything is painted and I can run all new conduit, we can put all the electrical in here the way it should be done. So we have cell phone service down here. We have internet service down here. We have high-speed internet. Um, we got all kinds of cool stuff. <laughs> so here's my, here's the escape patch. Now my escape patch looks a little interesting. By the way, it moves fairly easily. One thing I had to do was cut off the sensor. You might have to do that too because the sensor rusts and prevents you from opening the door. I don't even have the sensor. Oh, yours is a complete. It's bottom. missing. Okay. Um, you can find that on some of the other doors and cabinets too. I had to cut those. So this exhaust fan right here, it's not an exhaust fan, it's an intake fan. In Arizona, it gets very, very warm, even 60 feet underground. The, the whole um, idea that it's cool underground is because of moisture. Well, if you don't have moisture, if you have sand overhead, even 60 feet underground in the summertime, it gets to be 80 or 90 degrees down here. It's just too hot. So. I tried air conditioning at the first year I was here and I was spending $1,000 a month in air conditioning. It made no difference whatsoever. And the reason is that these massive walls had so much heat retained in them that the heat would radiate out faster than I could clean out, the, than I could cool the air. So I learned two years ago that in the winter time, when it is in the 30s outside, 30s and 40s, I have a timer and I just have a very powerful fan this fan pulls in cold air at night, so the timer is set to run only in the middle of the night when the air is coldest, and it pulls in cold air. Well, I do that all winter long, and then once the outside air temperatures start to warm up, I shut this, close it, and it stays nice and cool like you would expect all summer long. That's way smarter than paying $1,000 a month in air conditioning bills. Um, you might be looking at this piece of cardboard here. This fan here is just a couple inches smaller than the opening, and there's this weird effect actually because it's pulling so much air through this way, it actually creates the air going back in behind it. It creates the circular effect. So unless I put a piece of cardboard, a baffle, um, it, 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 it wasn't working properly. Putting this baffle to prevent the air from going behind the fan allows it to draw its maximum power through. So at night, this works beautifully. So is there anything else about this? Yeah, let me just get a video of it for these guys. See what mine would look like if it were clean. Yeah, so this part right here is fixed. These rods turn and these follow the rods out. But what's really interesting is they're very shallow. I don't think these were designed like a giant bolt. I think these were custom designed and custom cut 
to fit these massive blocks because they don't have much bite to them. And I think that's one reason why it's so difficult. Like when you were trying to open yours, I think that's one reason it was so difficult. There's just not much bite in there. That's it, interesting escape hatch. And I have all these wonderful lights in it, how beautiful condition they are. They're all beautiful. As I have red ones, white ones, and yellow ones, I think. Oh, so check these out, I still have these. I still have three or four of these on the property. These are the, emergency, the original emergency lighting system. One of them upstairs has two old school floodlights on top. They're missing here. Inside here was the batteries and then the detection system. These were the white floodlights that would pop on if the, if the site lost power. So that was your emergency backup. I thought that was pretty cool. These are still the originals. This is a good picture right here to just take an example of the amount of work that's on this ceiling and then look at that ceiling and you see what, how much work it is for one guy with a uh, sawzall and a grinder to uh, try and remove all that debris. And this is actually on my site too. This square right here on the floor is an equipment hatch to get things down to level three. That's this one. Yep. Um, where's our winch? That's ah, how we put everything on the bottom. Yep. Same thing we're going to have to do. They're not expensive. A couple hundred bucks. And that beam's already there, right? Yep. You just that was the original beam. Yeah, because this was an original equipment hatch so they could do maintenance down there and move stuff in and out. Now it's really dirty upstairs, right? No, this like, is what I'm going to start talking. You ready? It's really jacked up up there. All right. So up to this point, all you've been seeing is potential, right? You watch all these silo videos. You watch all this kind of stuff about what people are going to do. Well, upstairs, I already did. I took 12,000 pounds of steel, all those walls, kitchen, bathroom, sinks, Everything that you can imagine, all the stuff you saw, water tanks, water heaters, air conditioning systems, everything that filled that top level, and I pulled it all out of here. Because remember when I told you that the previous owner sucked in moisture? It was damp up there, and the rust was really bad. And there's an insulation in those walls that I knew I would never get the smell out. So in order to make this place habitable, I knew that those walls had to go. And I also did a few other things. So I want to 